Once again, the breaking news, Yahoo Sports. Adrian Wojnarowski is reporting Denver has parted ways with the coach of the year, George Carl. And according to a league source telling Yahoo Sports, let's bring in uh, Kevin Love, Minnesota Timberwolves forward, joining us on the show. Good to have you back. What do you think of that news, George Carl out in Denver? I, I, I'm just hearing that for the first time now. That's, that's, uh, that's crazy. That's wild. I did not see that coming. Well, there was talk that he was upset he lost his GM to the Pistons, and now you have maybe the possibility of him going to the Clippers. That, that, that was sort of in the works, though. I don't know if he kind of pushed for this, but maybe George relocates in Los Angeles. What would you think about that possibility? Yeah, I could definitely see that, especially if that's going to engage Chris Paul into you know, further talks with the Clippers, and he'd be able to re-sign there. And I think with you know Blake and uh, you know them being able to make a run, he's that high-powered offense, especially what you saw in Denver, you could, you could, they could definitely make that happen in Los Angeles as well. How much power do the players have in this league? If you're a marquee player, a max player, how much power do you have with who's your coach? Um, with who's your coach, I think, is a different type of power than you know what we did as far as contracts goes in the CBA. But I think as, as far as your coach goes, being able to, to recruit, it's, I, you know, it's tough to say, but we'll we'll be able to say. I don't know what the contact rules are as far as, you know, uh, Chris Paul being able to get in touch with, with Carl. So, but I think it would be very, uh, very good fit for him uh, because of the, the style and, and the offense that they're running and the, the type of basketball that they play in, uh, for the Clippers basketball. Would you want to be involved in who was going to be the coach of the Timberwolves if it ever came down to that where they had another coach coming in? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, uh, you know, at this point, we're, I mean, we're, we're pretty set with Rick Allen, uh, future Hall of Fame coach. But uh, if it came down to it, um, and I was, you know, looking at, you know, maybe shopping at different destinations way down the line, that, yeah, maybe I, I would like to be, you know, involved, especially if, uh, you know, we're on the verge of uh, turning the corner like the Clippers are. Uh, how's the hand situation? Uh, it feels great. I actually have a, a little bone to pick at, at ESPN this morning. I was in Bristol. They said there's some something about an outstanding balance at the cafeteria. If anybody, you know about this? if anybody has a problem with that, tell them to call me. <laughs> and if they do, they'll probably find out I have a few bones to pick with them. So there's a there's a oh, there, yes. there's a few outstanding uh, balances that still have to be paid as well. But uh, if I do have uh, an outstanding balance, you go in there again. You can put it on my tab. I'd be more than happy to pick they it up. For you. They wouldn't let me order my pastrami on rice, so I, I, <laughs> so I, I was like, all right, maybe I'll I'll just. But uh, it was a con- considerable amount. I was like. Yeah, yeah, did some work. <laughs> well, they certainly didn't pay me, so maybe uh, that, you know that's that they paid me in food there at the mothership. Right, right. Well, that's you know true. what it's like to work for a shaky organization. You play for the Timberwolves. Right. Oh, well, I was say, the Timberwolves they, they paid me in food early in my career. Now, I've, since I didn't stay, but they they they're taking care of me. So. <laughs> uh, help me understand this David Kahn uh, parting shot here, where. He was his exit interview where he actually talked about you needing to mend fences in the locker room. And uh, I don't know what the it, uh, I don't know if it was an uncomfortable relationship or no relationship whatsoever. But here's your former GM saying when you got hurt and it sounded like he was questioning your toughness playing through the pain. How, how did you take all those comments from him? And I'm paraphrasing what David Kahn had to say. Right. I didn't take it. You know, I had many talks with him, uh, you know, through the whole series of, of, of my hand and also, uh, you know, the, the games winding down at the end of the season and, and me being able to play. And, you know, we, we figured it would be a team decision at the end of the year, which it ended up being. And, you know, both Coach Adelman and, and myself and, and David at the end both thought, you know, there's only, you know, there's less than 10 games left in the season. We're not making the playoffs, so let's just go take care of the knee. And then, you know, once he finally, once he ended up leaving or, you know, they didn't uh, exercise his uh, uh, option in his contract, you know, he kind of had a, a few parting shots. But I don't think, you know, those were really, uh, you know, ill-mannered or ill-advised. I didn't take it too seriously. I do think, you know, getting back on the court, I will gain the respect of my teammates again. And as far as in the locker room and off the court, you know, I, I, I get along with all those guys very well. So, um, you know, I don't see, you know, any problem. I just need to get back on the court. He's Kevin Love, the Timberwolves forward, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. It still baffles me you didn't get a max deal. I, I just don't understand that with what you did for the organization. How 
how do you justify that you you didn't get a max deal by the Timberwolves? You know, there's there's a lot that I know that there's a lot that that goes into it. Especially, uh, I mentioned the new CBA earlier uh, in an answer, but I, I think that um, you know, there it's just the way it goes sometimes. And that uh, you know, I just got to really put it behind me. But it also gave us more space to, to sign guys like uh, you know Ricky Rubio and and Nikola Pekovic this summer. So I think it's it's, it's going to be. You know, good for us, and at the end of the day, you know, I have a fourth-year player option myself, so I have a, you know, a little bit of flexibility, whatever I decide to do. But I think, as far as heading in the right direction and and, and re-signing Pekovic and you know Ricky finally being healthy and Coach Adelman coming back with Saunders being on board now, I think it's going to you know make for a, a great number of years. Uh, if you want to preview the Spurs Heat, what do you think will play out here? We'll uh, let you put your uh, analyst hat on. Well, I think it's going to be a fun series to watch because both teams are in the top five in, in three-point shots and also uh, pick-and-roll offense. I mean, I think that, what, Tony Parker has probably scored more points in, in the off of the pick-and-roll than LeBron has uh, in the playoffs. I don't know that's that exactly, exactly, but he's really been great. Uh, he's playing some of the best basketball of his career. Uh, same thing with, with, you know, Duncan. He just seems to get better with age, I think, with, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Dwayne Wade and his knee. I don't think they want this series to, you know, go seven games, even though Riley said that this team was made for game seven. But I think it's going to be tough to, to pick against the Heat. I said all morning that it was, you know, harder versus head. My heart tells me that, uh, you know, the basketball gods and, you know, as far as karma goes, it's going to be uh, the Spurs. But, you know, it's going to, I have to go with the bad guy on this one. The bad guys, uh, <laughs> as far as the, pub, the public is concerned, I'm going to go with, uh, you know, the Heat and Six. What's it like when LeBron guards you? Uh, it's especially in transition. He's just a guy that, you know, he's my size, you know, basically 6'9", 260 pounds of just full force, one of the fastest guys end-to-end -end in the league. And, you know, just, just, a, just a bull. We'll just, just, you know, run you over. You almost have to wrap him up so he doesn't get to end one at the basket. So he's one of those once in a lifetime players. And at this point in time in his career, at least the last, the last you know, 18, 24 months, there's been only a couple players in history that have ever really played at this high of a level. The difference between LeBron now than when he was in Cleveland, when he was starting out his career, is what? I think just, uh, uh, I would say. There's a lot of things in this game, like a three-point shot, is his mid-range game, being able to not always have to drive to the basket, but pulling up and be able to, I wouldn't say rely on that, but go to that when, when the time is needed. It's almost like when, not saying that he's slowing down athletically, because he's not, but when Jordan you know, started to, on the second 3 you know, in 96, 97, 97, 98, those two years, he really added that fadeaway jump shot that kind of became his trademark. You're seeing LeBron kind of, you know, pick different spots on the floor and being able to be effective. I think that's one thing. I think leadership-wise, even though he let those teams to uh, the Spurs in 2007, the finals, I think he is just at a point now where, you know, he's just connecting on all cylinders with his teammates, with his game, with, with everybody. With it. And it's really, you know, as a fan uh, of the game and a basketball purist, it's fun to watch, but playing against it, it's no fun. Uh, where's Rubio rank right now? Top point guards in the NBA. Oh, uh, I think that that is a very good question, especially if you asked it about a year from now, because <laughs> he'd have a full, uh, healthy year underneath his belt. So I think he's going to have a lot to work on this off season as well. Like you know, we can all add to our game, but I think if, if he you know, continues to develop that jump shot, which we saw at the end of the year this year was something that he could, you know, steadily rely on and, and be more and more consistent with, and he's going to be, uh, you know, just that much better. But I think, you know, as far as point cards in the league go right now, it's, there's just so many, so many good players. But, um, you know, a lot of them you see him getting hurt with Ricky. You know, you look at Rondo, you look at Rose, you look at Westbrook, uh, you know, players of, of that caliber and that magnitude, you know, have been hurt. But those are some of the guys that are at the top of the list, Chris Ball and and. Also, Tony Parker being those guys too. Darren Williams, not excluding him, but that's a very, very tough position. Do you think Rubio could outshoot me? Because Rubio, yes, yes, Rubio. He's, he's a pro, pro NBA player. I mean, I, I, I don't know. You could probably outshoot Shaq in his in his day day, but probably not. Not Wait. that I'm comparing the two. 
but Kevin, do you I, not do you not have a TV? I have a TV. Have you I, I have, a, have you seen I have the shot? I had a pretty good seat this year for a number of games. I know, but I'm saying with my shooting, I, I've seen Rubio. I mean, I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that you dismissed I it. I guess, I guess the better question, I mean, the better, I, what I should have said is I haven't seen you shoot, so I don't know. You could be a knockdown shooter for all I know. Uh, I'd do my homework first. I mean, I'm asking a question. I know the answer from my perspective with Ricky Rubio. Well, you're a pretty confident guy, you know, so I, I wouldn't bet against you. Well, I think you just did. Well, you know, I got to take my guy over. Okay. Uh, I mean, you okay. are my guy. <laughs> By the way, I was a little upset. I didn't oh. get on the phone with you before the draft lottery to, to throw a little passion bucket or, or a different reference in, in the, the whole draft. Well, I think that's why we didn't move up. I think that's why we stuck at nine. Well, just keep this in mind. You can flirt with the mothership and play nice and act like you like those guys. I raised you. I mean, I was there during the UCLA <laughs> days. I mean, I'm, I was there in the beginning. Everybody jumps on now and all oh, Kevin Love. and You know what? I feel like I'm a surrogate parent to you. So keep that you in mind. You were there from the beginning when, 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 you could, when you in turn could beat me in shooting <laughs> Not anymore. You learned how to shoot threes. Damn you. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, tell me about the uh, Game Time app. I know uh, you're doing stuff with that. Uh, if you want to give me the details on that with Sprint. Yeah, the, folks, uh, the phone is the HTC One from Sprint. Uh, it has great sound with Beats Audio actually in it. Uh, it's a great screen, so if you can't be around a, a computer or a TV screen, you can watch it on there. It actually, I'm actually on it right now. It is really great. Now, obviously, the uh, a lot of people know the Sprint Game Time app, is, which is something that I use. And you know, if you need more more information, you go to Sprint.com/slash/NBA. So not too hard. It's always good to talk to you. Enjoy the off season and uh, stop doing those whatever kind of push ups you were doing that you broke your hands. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate it. Dan. All right. Thank you, Kevin. That's uh, Kevin Long. Thank you. Man, that, just a blanket statement there about Ricky Rubio. I'm not afraid of Ricky Rubio. You know, but Ricky is from another country. He has no idea. Somebody's going to have to say, um, Senor. Patrick in Fuego. Somebody's got to translate for him. Just tell, tell Ricky, you don't want to mess with this guy.